in terms of the developments uh, in court earlier today. We've got legal expert from the University of Johannesburg, Alton Hart. Uh, Mr. Hart, thank you very much for your time here on ENCA. All right, let's start off with uh, the expectation that we all had when it came to Tabo Besta. I think it was quite obvious that he'd have to change his legal team, right? Especially after the developments that were announced last week with one of his lawyers allegedly facing a rape charge. No, indeed, it is so that we had to sort of um, um, face that reality that at some stage he would need to change his legal representation. Of course, I also fear that what if um, it happens that Mr. Bester's um, legal team, one of them gets maybe found guilty in a court of law, then obviously they might face direct imprisonment there. And it will mean that we have a whole process of um, giving them copies of the document, them time to consult, so it will then lay the mat eventually. So... I think it was actually prudent today. They just withdrew from that so that they can focus on their own cases and actually new lawyers come on board to actually um, then help us so that we can expedite this case. So for me, I foresee that I, I foresaw that this would have been happening. Mm. Were you surprised at all by the application by um, uh, uh, Zolile Sekeleni's application uh, through his uh, legal representative, that is Nandi Pamakudumana's father, of course, uh, applying that on the 8th of August he be allowed not to appear uh, before the court physically because he lives too far and there'll be yet another postponement. Were you surprised by such an application? No, indeed, that application is a bit strange because obviously the court cannot uh, grant such an application. It's a no-brainer. You can't grant. The court doesn't have powers because the court will then excuse you to come to court, but on the next day then they ask, okay, issue a warrant. Then on what grounds is the court going to issue the warrant? And I stand by what the, the reasoning of the magistrate in that matter, that it is maybe if the state is going to be pursuing um, that a warrant be issued or a warrant can be issued but not pursue the actual enforcement of the warrant, then on the next day they can just say we've arranged and come and then the court issues a warrant because he was wanting to appear and then they just not going to execute it and then he would be asked to come on the next day that the court would give. But the reasoning of I think it was solid, it's within the Criminal Procedure Act, but what they were asking him to do was not allowed in terms of law mm. today. I think for me, uh, Mr. Hart, what was more surprising for me was the state not objecting to this particular application. And the reasons given by the defense lawyer uh, to the magistrate was that the case would be postponed yet again on the 8th of August. Uh, and the state not objecting to this when it's postponed because the state applied for it to be postponed for uh, reasons of further investigation. Isn't it the state basically admitting that it won't be ready in almost two months time to go ahead with this case? No, obviously, if they say further investigation, it means that uh, there's still a lot of things outstanding. And what I, I see from this, and I've said it on an earlier occasion, I believe that there is still a lot more accused persons that needs to be added to that roster of accused as it stands now, the nine accused before court. And we will have, like, I think maybe another maybe four or five postponements before we actually start getting to a direction where we know now we say, can discovery be made in this file so that we they can start preparing for pre-trial. But I don't foresee that the state being ready up until 2024 with this matter. I don't foresee that. So okay. the state, in essence, is admitting that they're not ready with um, with actually uh, setting the matter down to say, listen, yeah, we can go to trial. And that is now the, the unfor unfortunate thing because people want to know what's happening. But the state is not ready and they're far from ready. That I know for a mm. Mm. Well, uh, you know, especially looking at the fact that uh, the NPA telling Slinda Lomasigani, my colleague today, whom you've spoken to uh, a lot of times about this particular case, uh, saying that uh, they are expecting three more arrests. So it looks like every month or every two weeks or so there'll be more arrests and we'll be looking at an array of accused by 2024, Mr. Hart. But uh, in terms of uh, the application by Tabo Besta's new lawyer, not surprising, even his previous lawyer um, applied for the same uh, for the state to transport him. Uh, to uh, the Mang to uh, Bloemfontein for him to be in court physically uh, because of course they don't want to go with the application by correctional services that it would be too costly or too dangerous to transport him from Kosimampuru to Bloemfontein every time he needs to appear. At the end of the day, they need to consult with their client. Uh, you know, they can't be physically in court while he's virtual uh, in, in, in another province. No, that indeed, so that sort of half uh, encroaches upon 
on the, his rights to actually have like a uh, credential talks because there's certain things that happens in court that they need to like literally um, um, ask like indulgence from court two or three minutes to actually instruction. Now, if they're going to try and take a quick instruction, it will mean that the entire court has to adjourn. Everybody go out and then it's only them that's on that virtual link. Not even the people from correctional service on the other side needs to hear what is being discussed. And I mm -hmm. think by having him virtual, that right is a approach upon. And one needs to really check what type of danger, what, and you need to weigh it up. If it's really that he has done something so horrendous and stuff like that, that um, one can say that he's done something to the safety and security of the correctional officer, officers, maybe one should. But I think in this instance that um, forcing him to have these virtual things, I think somehow he should be now um, using the rules of court and everything to say that he's got a right to be treated fairly before um, his trial and actually to have access to his legal representations. And they should not frame it in a way to say it's for consultation purpose, but it's for that short procedural questions that they need to escalate, um, um, iron out with their client in court that you can't really do it because everybody will hear, maybe they will even hear what type of angle they might take as then not giving him a fair trial. So I think in that instance, yes, there's some sort of security measures, but also one needs to be sort of half, uh, be fair to the accused person. Although we are accusing him of such a crime, but we need to be fair in whatever we do. Mm, absolutely, even though he's also convicted of very serious uh, crimes as well. Thank you so much for speaking to us once again. Always a pleasure. Legal expert from the University of Johannesburg, Alton Hart.